I'd like to call the um, Jenkintown School Board work session of April 8th, 2024 uh, to order. welcome everybody to this is our um, work session uh, agenda and we need to start with yeah. one. We need to start with one. We do not. We not today. No. No. Um, we do not have comments from our student reps. No. Uh, Mrs. Glennon, how many more students do you think will be? We here? know these six were supposed to come, but we know somebody's on the way. So, okay. So, we'll, okay. So, we will. Yeah, Okay. 
Okay, so we are uh, going to just um, um, have Dr. Yonke report out. Um, there was a parent meeting prior to this regarding recess and supervision. And um, I'm not sure how many people were able to get to it. There might be some people online watching. So I'm just gonna have Dr. Yonke give like a five minute update on the results of that meeting. Thank you, Dr. Tarkas. So we had 36 parents show up, which was amazing. So the concern arose um, just about our recess coverage or supervision. And we scheduled, this came up at the superintendent's um, tea and me, coffee tea and me back in March. So we scheduled this meeting. Um, I was delighted to see so many parents show up. And we just shared, asked the parents to share some of their concerns. Um, and then I went over some of the things that we're doing that we put in place. So just to summarize some of the things we've done, um, last week we added one new staff person per lunch shift, and just today we started a second new staff person per lunch shift. So now we have eight total staff on for the hour lunch duty, that's four per shift. That's before we get any parent volunteers, which um, I have to say we're very thankful to get the parent volunteers that come. Um, but we can't rely on just parent volunteers. It's, it's our responsibility to make sure the students are supervised. So adding those two additional staff members is making a positive difference. And then any parent uh, volunteers we get is going to support us some more in addition. We also um, discussed indoor recess and the need for um, more tight supervision on that. So we talked about some solutions. Uh, we're going to combine classes. We're going to move uh, some of our classes into common areas. So there's one adult for um, for every classroom. And we're able to do that now with additional staff to put on. Uh, we discussed some some things about training for parent volunteers. Uh, Mrs. Glenn was there and she was very helpful. We talked about uh, the safety training that we're scheduled for this Thursday, the 11th. Um, but then we also talked about doing some subsequent trainings after that for the parents that are unable to make it at 11.30 this Thursday. We talked about um, creating a training for parent volunteers that we would conduct in the summer. Uh, before we start, thank you. Before, we start <laughs> uh, before we start the school year and then have those ongoing throughout the year uh, as new parents come on board as as uh, processes change in our lunch shifts. And then we talked about um, how we can move students. We're moving 400 students for that one hour. And it's it's very circle, cyclical, cyclical. Uh, Disney method, you know, you in one entrance, out of one entrance, so they're not combining, but there's some we use the word chaos. Moving out of the cafeteria and into the cafeteria, we talked about um, having some training days for students to help them relearn how to move about inside the cafeteria, how to line up. And then right at the end of the meeting, um, a couple of parents approached and said, we're going to make some modifications on the playground. The sustainability committee is going to do some work to help us indicate areas for students to line up. Um, they were decorating the, the um, fairy garden and putting some more activities in there. So we talked about getting more activities for students to do. Uh, the idle hands, make sure that they, they don't have idle hands at recess. So that's really what we discussed. Did I miss anything, Michelle? Is that pretty much it? Yeah, it was a great discussion. It was back and forth. I think we left. I, I know I left. I think many parents uh, left with a positive feel of the meeting. Many thanked us. Uh, we had three board members there. So I appreciate your attendance there. Um, and it was a very productive meeting. I don't know if any of the three of you want to add anything on this. If I have one question. Yes, please. Your head count of adults, staff, are you including yourself in that one hour? Yes, I'm in that. I'm in there every day. Yeah. Thank you. I thought it was well done, the meeting. Thank Thanks, you. Michelle, Thank you. For being and on the days, I'm rarely a rapson, but if I'm at a workshop or I'm absent or something, one of the administrative teams steps in, so that position is still going to be filled. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thanks. Thanks. Any Appreciate questions? That. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome to everyone, uh, especially to our families and our student athletes from Unified Bocce. As many of you know, uh, this was the first year that we had a Unified Bocce program here at Jenkintown. Uh, I just wanted to say just a couple of words. Michelle would be too humble. So I just want to appreciate uh, Michelle's commitment to our special education program, to our student athletes, to the idea of Unified Bocce. Um, Coach Kalman, Coach Barrett back there, those are the two kind of core people who 
got this idea started and rolled with it and did the most amount of work to keep this program moving forward and to make sure we hit all the deadlines and all the rules. There's a lot of rules in bocce that we didn't know about. <laughs> a lot of rules. So uh, we got to be rule followers. And they did a wonderful job and made sure we did that. Um, we had two referees for our home matches. It was Michelle and Mr. O'Brien. I know he's not here right now, but thank you to both of them for making that happen. And then, of course, most of all, uh, to our student athletes, I'm going to let Michelle introduce maybe a couple people here and hopefully they can come up maybe and, and shake a hand. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience for all of us and for our student body to be able to support this group of athletes. And we hope it's just the beginning of Unified Sports Year. Thank you. Thank you. my absolute pleasure and I am so proud of all of our student athletes, of our coaches, of our managers. So I am going to introduce the, some of our student athletes that are here today and maybe they can come up and shake some hands. Okay, Carter? Okay. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so we have Carter Chambers. Come on up. We have Max Bellew. We have Chris Fitzpatrick. We have Luke Rocco somewhere. <laughs> and we have Simon Kimball that are here tonight. Um, some of our players and team managers that were not able to be here tonight, we have uh, Colin Newman, um, Amelie Irwin, uh, Julie Reyes, and I wish, the only thing that I wish I could do better is I wish I had Mr. Spiegler's way of saying all your names, <laughs> so not as cool as him, but, um, and then as managers, um, Preston Farrington and Emma Dinkin. And I didn't know, Ms. Barrett or Ms. Kalman, if you'd like to come up and say a few words. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to have the opportunity to recognize these amazing student athletes and student managers. I want to thank our administration for their support and efforts in collaborating with Special Olympics Pennsylvania to bring Unified Bocce to Jenkintown. Um, if you had a chance to attend some of our home matches, which I think a lot of people in here have, you would have known that you were um, watching something very special. Um, Mr. Spiegler created a joyful and spirited environment where athletes could hear their names announced as they competed for the win. Students were surrounded by faculty and friends and family, and it felt like the entire school was here. It was incredible. Um, the gym was covered with signs of support. The competition was seriously fierce. Um, there was tension. There was silence. It was um, intimidating for our first wing match. We didn't know what to expect. Um, some of the competition was down to the millimeter, thanks mm -hmm. to Mrs. Glennon, Mr. O'Brien, literally like with a tape measure of measuring <laughs> the, um, the bocce balls. Um, but what Mrs. Barrett and I saw as coaches was an incredible group of students joining together in friendship and fun and unity. Behind the scenes, we practiced twice a week, and through those practices, athletes developed their bocce skills, which is actually very hard, <laughs> um, and built relationships um, and we all had a ridiculous amount of fun. Um, we weren't sure what to expect when we first created our team, especially because many of us had no idea how to play bocce, except for Luke. And his <laughs> parents are really good and like intuitive. Um, but after our first practice, we could recognize that this was a special group. Um, the, spot, the bocce skills improved over time, resulting in a competitive win against Shelmium High School, which um, <laughs> felt really good because we were against my son. So I was just, <laughs> <laughs> it was like extra sweet. But um, anyway, um, but more importantly are the friendships that were made off the bocce court at athletes and partners reflect kindness and support and they're silly and fun. Um, students come to my classroom and play games I don't quite understand, like Fruit Ninja and like crazy types of handshakes. Um, and um, a true partnership was developed. And so 
beyond a game, beyond bocce, it has really been like a highlight of my teaching career to be um, a part of this experience. So bocce is a sport, but it was way more than a sport and unified sports like are everything. So I hope that we can continue this. And I just think like this was a spark of an idea that we all came together to um, implement and it was awesome. So thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for the presentation. Congratulations, all our student athletes. It's just it's having an Italian background. It's good to know we are playing bocce <laughs> in the high school. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, and again, I just want to thank the staff, Mrs. Glennon, Mr. O'Brien, just for their support. It was a wonderful season. The home matches were just heartwarming and our players are good, <laughs> really, really good. You guys did such an amazing job. Um, I learned a little bit about bocce, and I couldn't believe um, how well you were performing. And um, just so proud of you. And we look forward to this being one of many seasons. So it's the, the beginning of a lot of great things. So I'd like all the athletes to give themselves a round of applause. Welcome to stay, but we are going to dismiss our athletes and their families if they would like to to um, to go home and get some rest at this time. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm going to um, just give an update on our district goals uh, for the month of March. So we. Um, our one goal is our uh, curricular programming, and for that goal, our kindergarten through second grade teachers visited Culp Elementary School on March 5th to see a program called Foundations in Action and to gain a deeper understanding of implementing the program with Fidelity at JES. So we are looking for a new elementary language arts program next year, and um, we currently are doing Foundations as part of our program but they wanted to see it in action to get some more ideas and to learn how to implement it a little more fully. So uh, whenever we can facilitate offsite visits to other districts, we certainly encourage that. And uh, we're very appreciative that our teachers took us up on that. So Dr. Yankee, thank you for helping facilitate that. That went really well. And our DEI committee um, met on March 18th to discuss the teacher survey results of equity grading practices, K-12, primarily focusing on homework, and they also met about the interaction between general education and special education students and how to enhance participation in conferences for our minority students. So I'd just like to thank everyone who participated in our DEI committee. Um, that meeting went very well. Also, awesome. And that concludes my superintendent report. Okay. So um, I will turn it over to Mrs. Ovington at this point. Oh, no, I'm oh, sorry. Do Co comments. comments from members of the public and, and staff yeah, on agenda, agenda items. items only. If you have comments on agenda items, come up with the microphone. You have three minutes. Uh, Lori Sullivan, 308 Rodman. Um, I just want to let the board know that my son was on that unified bocce team, and it was amazing. Um, I have three boys here, and that was one of the most special experiences we as a family have had at this school. So any other opportunities for any kinds of unified sports, I just, I, so thank you for making that possible. Um, Mrs. Kelman and Mrs. Barrett, all the time they put into that was phenomenal. And any other opportunities, I just, Luke was so happy and so engaged and parents of high school kids know that doesn't happen a lot. Um, so um, thank you. And again, any other opportunities for anything like that, please consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
any other comments on agenda items? Okay, seeing none, we'll close that section of the meeting. And uh, so then over to Ms. Dovington. Dovington. Over to, Ms. Dovington to review the work session items. So first we have our approval of minutes. So we have the work session from March 11th, the business meeting from March 18th, as well as the curriculum committee from March 11th. So if you could review those, if you see anything missing or anything that needs to be fixed, please let me know and we'll put them up for approval next week. Um, for our finance and operations summaries, we have our payment of bills for March 2024 that come in just a little over 2.1 million. Um, our real estate tax collector's report isn't due until the 10th. So as soon as we get that, we'll update that although there won't be anything on it because everything went to delinquent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just a formality at this point. Um, our county reports for a transfer tax. Um, for last month, we received $11,093.60. We have our treasurer's report in the general fund investments. We have a little over 4 million and on our savings, a little over two. Um, for our bond fund, we have $54,457 and our capital projects, we have 176,000. We have our high school student activity and scholarship funds that were provided by Mr. Ashenberger. Um, our cafeteria operations as well, that's not due until the 10th. I actually did receive it today. So um, I'll include that for next week. We have our updated real estate assessment report. Um, we have our revenues and expenditures. Our revenues are $16,442,818. Which is just about 89% of our revenues are in um, year to date, and our expenses are at $11,297,812, which is about 61%. Uh, before and after care, uh, we're currently at just about $29,700 um, that we are profiting at this point. Um, we have our acceptance of donations from Mr. Morris. Thank you very much. We have our approval of facility use forms for the HSA. We have Trivia Night, Earth Fest, and the Red and Blue Fair. Um, we have the Stage Company Theater Arts, and then we have a retroactive one for the um, Barrow for an egg hunt. Um, we have a technology agreement with the IU for our discovery platform. We have an insurance proposal for a live risk research insurance for our athletes. Um, we have the renewal of our METS contract for the 24-25 school year for our cafeteria operations. We have the approval of our PSBA dues for next year, which is uh, $10,419. We have the approval of the independent contractor agreement with Mary Fitzgerald to complete her curriculum. We have the approval of the agreement with the MCIU for our access services for 24-25. And then lastly, we have the approval of the contract with the MCIU for the virtual high school consortium participation. Joe, can you speak a little bit more about 4.2? Like what, what's going on there with the, uh, is this something? Virtual high school? Yeah. Uh, we have that every year. Okay. Um, it goes through the IU. It's an option for us to provide our own um, online Sorry. schooling for our students if, if they're needed. Got it. Mr. Oler, do you want to explain how some students use that? I mean, there's a couple different ways that we use that. Yeah, please. So as Ms. Ms. Ovington said, uh, Montgomery virtual program is run through the IU. Um, we have virtual high school, which we've had for years, which we get 20 seats per semester. So we get 40 seats per year for students to take courses in areas that they might not be able to take here. So we have students this year doing Mandarin Chinese and forensic science and some other types of courses. Um, that's the one that I think is approved. And then just to clarify, we also have Montgomery virtual program, which is a virtual option that some of our students take also for virtual learning as well. Thank you. Sure. Oh, do you have another question? I was just uh, 4.15 insurance for athletics. Is this a different company? No. Because this is the same one we've used for the last. And this I've covers heard. all student athletes? Yes, and it includes middle school. Uh, Mr. Brian and I double checked, and that it includes the 
high school varsity football as well. But they specifically do it, and then it has the umbrella for everything else. Um, I think it has 25 currently on there. They said if we go higher than that, we just like give them the number on our roster once we have that completed. So middle school, high school, varsity sports, and all middle school sports, but just varsity? Is that what you said? Um, no, it's specific. It's generally for football. Oh, it's oh, so oh, like oh. it'll quantify football with okay. the number of participants, okay. and then the umbrella covers the oh. other um, sports and female sports as well. Okay. Yeah. My question is just the four point one four agreement. It says technology services. I just I don't know. If yeah, if you look at the um, the attachment, it's for a discovery program that they utilize in the schools. I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm going to be honest. We'd have to talk to Mr. Cummins about mm -hmm. what this is. We can have Mr. Cummins give an update next week, or I can even have him put it in the Friday update this week. Yeah, if you look at the attachment, let me look at it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's for a providing technology services for Jacobtown Elementary and the high school. Um, for fifteen hundred dollars, but that it's it's the discovery program, and I don't know. I mean, where, I don't know but yeah, it says that, that, that they've specified right in the description. It should talk about what the program. Is. Right. Yeah, I'll have Mr. Cummins yeah. add that into the Friday um, update, and then we can um, publicly explain <clears throat> what it is before the board vote next week. And then I just want to represent the insurance one. Um, is that the old address did that address change for the district it had to change from gps didn't it um it's changed it's st we're still in the process of moving everything over okay. to the 250 west okay. so as things come in like we'll scratch it off and write 250 west okay. when we send it back to okay. them yeah okay good any other questions thank you Okay, under uh, section five recommendations of the superintendent, we have approval of world language oral proficiency assessments. We have that we have that every year here for our students. Such reoccurring and we have the approval of dual a credit, dual credit agreement, and we're happy to offer our students that as well. So um, brings us to the personnel report. We um, we uh, are approving a, a leave for Mrs. May. Um, we have Mrs. Butler, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we have extended school year, we have approval of Mrs. May, Mrs. Butler, Ms. Sanchez, and Ms. Thomas on there to do um, ESY this summer for our students. So those appointments are up there right now. Uh, so we're excited about that as well. Um, section 7, we do not have any first reading of policies tonight, correct, Justin? Correct. And section eight is information for our safety mm -hmm. reports that were run in March and our maintenance reports, they're also run in March. Um, and next week, uh, well, do we have any old business to discuss before next week? No, any new business? Um, I have some, just some new yeah. business um, uh, from Eastern Center for Arts and Technology. Great. I had the privilege of attending the Skills USA award ceremony up in Hershey, PA on Friday morning. Um, congratulations to all of our students and all the students in the region who um, participate in Skills USA. Uh, two of our students are bringing home medals back to the district. Uh, Carolyn Keim received a bronze medal for t-shirt design and Celia DeFazio a silver medal for in the photography category. And uh, the team from Cheltenham are going to be going to Atlanta for That's the national cool. competition. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it was just a really fun, exciting morning. That's and awesome. It was really terrific to see all the students and how supportive they are of each other and, and those programs. That's great. So, yeah, congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, okay, and so we will have liaison reports next week, so um, other committees will report out, so that will be more new business next week. And now we're going to open it up to comments from members of the public and staff on non-agenda non items. Um, please limit your comments to three minutes and state your name and address. Oops. Hi, 
Hi, Kelly Hudson. I'm at 242 Wincote Road. Um, I have two girls currently in the school. I wanted to extend a thank you to Dr. Yonke for today's meeting. I felt like it was really productive and I think that we accomplished some good brainstorming. Um, I wanted to piggyback on some of the things that we talked about, um, just the necessity to rehire the full-time aides. Um, I think that we're making strides with putting staff personnel in, pulling them from the pool that we currently have. But I, I think that the push to get, you know, at least to instructional aides full time in the school would just be beneficial as the demographic changes and grows. Um, and I also just wanted to put a shout out there for Earth Fest coming. It's Earth Week. We're going to be doing something either during school or after school every day. We're going to be doing a ribbon cutting on the 25th for the Fairy Garden. We've been working hard out there. So we hope to see lots of friendly faces during the week of Earth Week. So thank you thank for all you. your work on that, Kelly. <clears throat> Anthony McCluskey, 253 Washington Lane. I stand before you today to address a matter of pressing concern regarding the proposed solution to our lack of adequate co uh, coverage for lunch recesses. Lunch alterations made by Dr. Yonke, along with staff attrition, have led to a significant reduction in coverage during lunch hours, directly impacting the welfare and supervision of our students. Two weeks ago, Dr. Takis told us that our teachers were contractually entitled to a 30 minute lunch break and an additional 30 minutes of uninterrupted prep time each day. This contractual obligation is foundational to ensuring that our educators have the necessary time to recharge and plan effectively, thereby maintaining the quality of education that we all strive to provide. However, the recent encroachment of the re of recess and lunch duties into this critical one hour period represents an overreach by the administration. This intrusion not only undermines our teachers' contractual rights, but also detracts from their ability to deliver the high standard of education that our children deserve. Historically, under the last three principles at least, our school has successfully operated three distinct lunch recesses, and the current issues have not arisen from these long-standing practices, but rather from staff attrition and schedule modifications that were made without prioritizing <laughs> the best interests of our students. We must recognize that the strength of our educational system lies in its people, our dedicated teachers who should not be burdened with the additional duties that compromise their contractual rights and ultimately the quality of education. It is imperative that we revisit these changes considering the proven effectiveness of the previous schedules and the paramount importance of our students and teachers' well-being. In conclusion, I urge the board to reevaluate these schedule changes and engage in a collaborative dialogue with all stakeholders to find a solution that honors our commitments to our educators and ensures the highest standards of care and education for our students. Thank you. Hi, I'm Meredith Shields, I'm at uh, 205 Rodman. Um, I have three kids in the district. Um, and my question uh, for the board is, what is happening to the money in this district? Um, new hires are being paid significantly lower salaries than the teachers who left the position or the district. For example, Dr. Eirich was paid $110,000, whereas Dr. Kugelman is making 70. It's an almost $40,000 difference. Uh, Jenna Garcia's salary was 68,801 whereas Tom Oliver is being paid 30,000, almost $40,000 difference. Jamie Goldberg's salary was $105,230, whereas Peyton Bedura is being paid 27,118. It's an almost $80,000 difference. Why can't we afford to hire more staff for the elementary? Instructional aides, make sure that there's staff people supervising them at lunch, at recess, helping teachers in the classrooms when they're needed, um, instead of expecting or relying on parent volunteers to staff the school. Um, in addition, um, it I was asked to ask, how many louder milk ca cases have there been before Dr. Takas was our superintendent versus how many have there been since she has been in place? If anyone has that information. 
no one ever answers. So thanks. No one ever answers. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Louder no. cases. Um, they are cases that an employee can request a hearing okay. before. So, uh, yeah, we. It's a good question. Just answer if there's something else for public comment. Okay, is there anything else for public comment? Oh, well, is I that? Thank you to Dr. Yonke for the meeting. It was helpful and productive. Nora McCloskey, 253 Washington Lane. Um, Dr. Tech has stated at the T event that the teachers were not an option to help at recess because they have an uninterrupted hour during lunchtime for their contract. But now the teachers are being asked to rotate into cover recess. So are we breaching their contract or are we not? Well, I've read their contract and I see that this uninterrupted hour is not in their contract. And so why did the superintendent mislead us into thinking it was? I think many here can verify that that is exactly what was said. I also know that the narrative of an un uninterrupted hour is false to begin with, given that they regularly hold meetings and extracurriculars during that time as they are also contractually ob obligated. I also see that per the elementary teacher side, they are given, per their contract, they are given one 40 minute prep period, presumably during specials, but the middle school high school side is given two 40 minute prep periods. Should both sides of the link not be given the same prep, especially given that the elementary side has more students? And where are the teachers going to be making up that prep time? On another note, why did we replace the middle school high school psychologists before the elementary school psychologists, given the disproportionate number of IEP observations needed on the elementary side? We were also misled to believe that the elementary school had help on the way with rehiring of our previous one, but in fact, she will most likely she will mostly be seeing middle school high school students, while the elementary school will continue to rely on the intern. And as for more lopsided staffing, again, to Meredith's point, why did we move an instructional aide across the link when JES is down three IAs with no help in sight? And while we're talking about being misled, during that same tea event, Dr. Takis stated that she was not here when the last teacher's contract was done. And when pressed, she stated she was the superintendent at the time, but was not involved in the negotiations herself, and that the board handles those, not her. But the reality is she was indeed present on those calls. With this continued pattern of half to non-existent truths, how is the community supposed to trust this administration? Where is the accountability? Hi, my name is Tara Higley and I have a, oh, 619 Washington Lane. I have a second and sixth grader. Um, we we're in Texas and we moved here this last school year and um, my husband fought tooth and nail to get into the Dickentown borough because we heard really good things about it. Um, and I heard so many good things about the school. Um, the teachers in the community really make the school and we love that. But when I found out that there weren't um, any, on rainy days when there's no one watching our children in the classroom, I was absolutely floored. Um, I used to be an educator and I would never step foot out of my classroom ever. Um, now I see things are changing and we had a great meeting earlier and um, Dr. Yonke did a great job really um, having great solutions and a lot of other people had um, great solutions. It was very positive, but I just can't believe that um, we had to push this hard when it's very obvious that this is not safe. Every staff member in there I know was turning their head knowing it wasn't safe. And um, for years, from what I've heard, other parents have been sending emails and asking questions about it. Um, so I'm upset about that. Um, and I wonder if these concerns happen in the future, how long is it going to take for things to um, change if a child is left in a classroom unattended? That's an obvious one. Are other things like that going to happen? Um, I also do want to talk about, um, and this is something that could happen in the future, but I want to propose um, having a locked fence around the elementary. Um, I know that costs money, but eventually we could close it off. And then of course we want the community there after school, we could unlock it and open it. But I think if we have the great um, safety protocols coming from the front, we should also have it from the back. Um, we could just have a security guard go and lock it at the beginning of school and unlock it at the end of school. Um, and I think that would also be something that would make parents very happy and staff members and children feel safe. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Galina Davenport, 100 West Avenue. 
I have um, two genuine questions that I really don't understand. One, um, I was viewing the teacher's contract and um, I think I need help to understand better. In the contract, it say that the teachers have 30 minutes in the morning and then they have 30 minutes in the afternoon and my understanding is they have the 40 minutes prep and then they have one hour of um, uninterrupted time, but which is not, according to Dr. Yankee, is just not locked in the contract as a lunch time. They have the lunch for 30 minutes and um, the rest is just not, I'm sorry, Dr. Yankee, I'm not recalling the word you used. But um, can someone please help me um, and explain to me what are these 30 minutes before that are um, the students enter the building and the 30 minutes um, after the students leave the building used for? Um, that's the one question. Mm -hmm. And um, my other question was, um, we keep hearing that um, Dr. Jodakis is misleading us. Um, um, if somebody can elaborate on that and explain to me because these don't seem confusing to me when you go and do a little research um, it's clear what it says in the contract um, so um, thank you very much thank you. I can give you pages on Hello, Bridget Osborne, um, 601 Shoemaker. Since I'm here, I just want to follow up and can't state how much I agree with so many of what the other parents have stated. Our need for instructional assistance, not only to cover bare minimum safety during lunch and recess, but I really think our students could use the support um, on top of, especially the younger grades. On top of that, I don't want our fourth grade class to be forgotten. <laughs> there's still two. It feels like there's new students coming every day and they're just bursting at the seams. I have one in middle school now and see how much the transitioning between classrooms and getting prepared for middle school, high school is really important. They don't have that this year. I think that's okay, they're only in fourth, but I think moving forward to fifth grade, that would be tremendously beneficial. Education, behavior, you know, just being prepared for middle school and high school. Um, I thought for a long time what Tara said about locking up the playground, you have to give your sign your soul away to get through the front door. But if I wanted to, I could just walk right down the playground anytime I wanted to and grab a kid. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna and I don't wanna, but it's really ob obvious to me. So um, just kind of wanted to say thank you for the meeting. Uh, I love that. So that's it. <laughs> any other comments? All right, so none will close up. Do you have any? Um, so, thank you for the uh, suggestion about the locked fence. We can definitely look into, um, into that and what that would uh, take. Um, as far as the teacher's comment, uh, the teacher's contract, the teachers do have 30 minutes prior in the morning before students arrive and they have 30 minutes in the afternoon after students are dismissed. That time is designated for professional responsibilities. Sometimes there are IEP meetings, sometimes there are um, other types of meetings to look at data or something that the principals might need um, them to gather for. It is not always assigned. There is a 30 minute lunch for the elementary teachers. There's a 30 minute lunch period for the middle school, high school teachers, there's an additional 30 minutes that is tacked on to the elementary teacher's lunch that is um, not assigned uh, regularly. However, um, in the past, it has been utilized for a rotational duty coverage uh, that has not been used that way last year or this year. Um, but Dr. Yonke and I talked about how um, we can utilize that on a rotational basis, which would not be overburdening to anyone I think when we put that in four times from now to the end of the year um, so it's four 30 minute periods from now to the end of the year however the rest of that time predominantly um, 
has been and um, will be pretty much unassigned during that time unless, you know, a, a mandatory meeting arises, but that's very rare. Um, and yes, the middle, the middle school, high school teachers, they do have two prep periods that is in the contract and that was negotiated, I think, sometime in the 90s, 1990s. Um, so wait, just to be clear then, the new rotation schedule doesn't violate the contract? No, it does not. Okay. No, it does not. But that 30 minutes has not been used recently for duty. Um, however, uh, in talking with the entire administrative team, we recognize that there has been supervision issues. Um, there are also, uh, according to Dr. Yonke, there were more parents in the beginning part of the year that were volunteering. That has tapered off, so there is a need to, um, to, uh, to get more supervision. It's as simple as that. Um, also, um, there, the position has been posted. It's been posted all year. It was taken down a few times when we thought we had people uh, for one reason or another. Some people did not pan out, um, whether it was a lack of clearances or they changed their mind or they just didn't follow through for one reason or another. That has happened a few times. Um, and then the posting has gone back up. So it has nothing to do with budget. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, the board not being willing to pay for more positions at lunchtime. That has never been a conversation in the business office with me or with the board. That has never ever had anything to do with the budget. So I want to make that perfectly clear. Um, if anyone is listening or is out here that would like a paid position, we are more than happy. We are still um, hiring for those positions. But um, as, Doc, as Dr. Yonke discussed in the meeting today, and as he recapped, Prior to this board meeting, um, there will be more supervision out there. We are committed to student safety. That has been something that has been paramount since I've been here um, in many of the efforts that I have been doing. Um, student safety always comes first, and um, we're happy to, to put this in place to um, increase safety for students. But just to clarify, the staff supervision is not contingent upon uh, there being volunteers or a lack of volunteers. That's correct. This is a plan going forward and that the volunteers is are just something to come and be part of the community. I appreciate you clarifying. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Are you able to describe what you're doing at the local uh, Rex? I'm sorry, the, the public comment is closed right now, but so my first we're, meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's okay. Here. That that's okay. We're just on board comments. Sure. Um, but so none of the staff attrition from this year, did that change the staffing of the lunch period? In any way? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you for clarifying that. No. I just wanted to say one thing that I remember actually, Dr. Takis, when you came on board, before Dr. Takis came aboard, the full fence that's there now wasn't there. There were huge right. gaps. So, like, uh, lunch duty was a little bit of like goalie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, she made sure to close off the parking area from uh, for the kids yeah. and then also the gate around the front. And there was some controversy. Uh, when the mm -hmm. gate went up in the front, it wasn't popular with yeah. the entire community. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there was a lot of safety things I put in place that were not popular with the community, including the secure vestibule, including our security agents, including more security cameras. So there, there have been mixed feelings about that, but this board has been steadfast about student safety, and we put a lot of things in place. And the fencing, also, we have to work with the borough right. with that. So that's not something that we can unilaterally do. The borough rents our playground. Um, there was some conversation about students coming from Beaver Hill and how that fencing would them coming over and where they would cross. So, um, but it's definitely something that we can look into. I think it's a good suggestion. I think it's something we can look into. Another quick point of clarification. Um, the RBTs, the Response Behavior Technicians, Michelle, did I get that acronym correct? Instructional assistants that have that training, yes. Okay, great. Yes. And, when, and we wanna make sure that the results of there being um, shortages with supervision didn't have to do with attrition, but it did have something to do with those three part times rolling over to full time. Correct, because there okay. were less bodies, but the, the full time equivalent was the actual actual same. It wasn't attrition, but it was these folks who really be really in the building full time for that duty. We didn't have them readily available. Correct. The other thing that I just want to make everyone aware is that instructional assistants are are extremely valuable and necessary, and However, that it, it doesn't necessarily equate to recess supervision because during the lunch period, many of our instructional assistants are, are sitting and eating lunch with students and helping them 
eat their lunch. So they cannot do two jobs. They cannot be out and about and supervising in the cafeteria and helping children eat their lunch. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of poses a little a conflict, which is why we're putting a rotational schedule in place. Dr. Takis, I have two uh, yes. comments. So as you in the future move forward about potentially adding fencing, as you engage in that conversation, it's important to engage a much larger community because parents of the people in the district are not the only people in the community. That's right. So we need mm -hmm. to have an open conversation to make That's sure right. it's publicized. Um, I would be interested as you work through that process to mm -hmm. know because Beaver Hill is our safety exit for a lot of plans mm -hmm. that yep. we really need to think this through as to ensuring that quick access is also like built into it. Yep. So there's like a lot of layers that would have to be work through. Yep. Um, if you could give us at the next meeting an update in current um, uh, grade levels and what the breakdown in numbers are sure. just to see what the change is from September to now. Yep. Um, then I appreciate again, Dr. Yankee and Michelle for being at that meeting recess. I want to acknowledge also just being in the district for a long time now, there is not only a change in size of enrollment, there's also changes in parental importance and what I feel as a high school parent was different when our kids were in elementary school. There's also many less stay at home parents. And so the whole structure and culture is changing and we're trying to be responsive to that. Sometimes um, that people's needs and wants and cultures and their value systems don't always come to us in any sort of survey we do. So I think it's important to um, continue to engage in conversations and give feedback to our administration board in a productive, positive way, because I don't know what you value. And I don't know that seven years ago, a cohort of parents really wanted to be in this district a lot and had the ability to. So we're working through a bunch of different things. I, it, I hope that there's a better solution out there. This is not the first time indoor recess has been a conversation. Um, so, you know, it's something that hopefully we have a, a better solution to, and that solution probably is going to change, need to change in the future as well. Um, and I just want to clarify, as you're talking about the contract, um, it, the language in the contract says there's two 40 minute preps for the middle school, high school. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And so is one lunch and one is no. a prep. So, yeah, so you okay if I... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yep. So you have teachers need to teach or have a duty for six of the 42 minute period. Two of the 42 minute periods are prep periods and one is a 30 minute lunch. Um, I know somebody mentioned the 30 minutes before school, after school. Um, I know that that's time where we do make up tests, reviews for tests, student council meetings, zero period classes if we have them. So there's something going on in the morning and then obviously making sure that when our students are able to access the building at 740, that we have supervision and staff in there. Um, I would just encourage people, and I understand the enrollment is larger overall in the elementary school, but just the idea that uh, many of the teachers in middle school, high school have teaching loads of 80 to 100 students. When you look at the different courses that they're teaching, they're not teaching the same courses to the same students all day long. So when you're an English teacher and you have 100 students on your caseload, that's 100 essays to grade every single time that you assign an essay. That's a tremendous amount of time. And so that's just my experience having taught middle school. Um, the numbers are lower overall. The numbers that teachers are engaged with are actually higher than middle school. And the only other comment generally to this conversation part of the other conversation the earlier recess meeting people will talk we're talking about you know budgetary asking budgetary questions so um you know being that there's a larger group of students in the elementary school and the middle school high school there's a perception that um there's much more resources put towards the middle school high school in extracurriculars co-curriculars 
those things. As we go through the budget process, it's important to me that I know as a board member, speaking for myself only, that there has been efficiencies looked at from K to 12, what everybody is doing. We hear a lot of different, I want this, I want this added, I, we need this. We need to know at a baseline, we are maximizing efficiencies from a K to 12 approach and not just elementary in this silo, mm -hmm. in middle school, high school, because I, I need to know that we have maximized all of our, our efficiencies across the board in how we use IAs and how we, we distribute to our middle school, high school, mm -hmm. and our elementary school. Um, because as a parent of a high schooler down to an elementary school, it does feel that our elementary kids do not have the opportunities. I know as a high school, I'm, talk, I'm looking at different high school parents in here. Our high school students, when they were in elementary, had many more opportunities. And I know it's part of the strategic plan and it's gonna be a process, but I hope it comes to fruition sooner than later. And that may look different than how we have staffed and run different extracurriculars if they're not being filled, it's important to me personally that we look at a different way to utilize that money to get the services and activities that these young kids do deserve here. And that is not to say that this superintendent and these administrators are not thinking that. They are, they are listening and I do support them. It is very hard to meet every person's need here. It is extremely hard. There was a question about where's the money going? If you watch the assessed value, just to get back to the baseline, to give the contractual raises that we agreed to three years ago, we really, it is beneficial for us to have people retire so that we can take that money in cost savings and give it to them as their next raises that we are contractually required to do and then still try to use a little bit left of the money that we raised in taxes to get more IAs, to offer more instructional assistance, to do all these things. It is a very complicated process. I do not think anyone on this board, administration, staff, is not trying their best. Okay, you put up a lot of really good points. Really, really good points. And thank you for some of that historical background because there are a lot of parents here who are new and or who haven't come to board meetings regularly and they you know might hear something out in the community or make might make an assumption and there have been a lot of things that the administrative team and this board have done in the last mm -hmm. couple of years to move education forward and i'm really glad you brought up assessment appeals because we were hit with a wallop with 610 old york we lost a lot of money in our budget with that assessment appeal that was hanging over our heads for about 10 years mm -hmm. now which finally came to a payday so there's a lot of things that we, we have mitigated. There's also a lot of things that we have put forward in budgets for the betterment of our children. And our children's needs are becoming more and more complex. We have more students than ever that are in out of district placements, which cost a lot of money, which cost transportation as well. We do not have our own transportation department. It is on our dime to make sure that we are putting children in the least restrictive environment and appropriate placements. We have tried to bring some students back to district. We're going to continue to do that moving forward, but that is a big ticket for us. We also um, have more complex needs of students in our district right now. We have trained our current staff members on Wilson training. We have trained them to be RBTs. Um, we have trained them on ABA. We have, we have done, trained them for ESL training. I mean, we have trained our staff on a number of things to help meet the needs of our students that are, is ever changing every single year. So all of that costs money. Um, I also want to say that this is not the only forum for people to come with ideas and to talk to us. This happens once or twice a month, and it is not productive to have it... Um, controversial or adversarial. We are here. Our doors are always open. Dr. Yonke, Mrs. Glennon, Mr. Roller, Mr. Cummins, myself, Ms. Ovington. We are always here. We have never said no to a parent who has come to have a, a conversation with us. I had a conversation in the community this week with about 25 parents. It was really, really productive. Um, there are parents who are alum who want to roll up their sleeves, who really want to get involved. I'm thrilled about that. I am grateful for that. 
So, you know, I encourage anyone who's watching, anyone who's here, I mean, please come and talk to us. There's a lot that has been done over the last 10 years. Um, I am extremely grateful that this board has been proactive and forward thinking. Um, they never said no when we need to do a construction project. You're sitting in a media center that was decrepit not too long ago. It had mice in the walls. It had paneling and carpeting on the walls. It was decrepit. It was horrible. And this board said, yes, we're going to do it. We built a new teacher's room upstairs. It's gorgeous. Um, that was new. We built two new classrooms. We built the vestibule. We put programming in for students. Um, and I just want to mention, um, uh, Ms. Constantino, thank you for bringing up the clubs and activities. I want to give kudos to, there's a group of um, high school teachers, middle school high school teachers who have worked diligently year after year after year with the administration to take a look at what middle school, high school clubs and activities have not um, run. And we have given them full reign to out reallocate that money to something else. Now, there's a couple things that um, we have to look at moving forward. Those positions are in the teacher's con contract. They are contractual. We have one more year of the teacher's contract. It is up after next year. That is the perfect time to open it up and, and renegotiate additional clubs and activities. We are doing an audit based on our comprehensive plan and our district goals to take a look at not only um, curricular, extra, uh, curricular activities, but also extracurricular activities. Every month I report out on the progress of our goals. Mr. Roller has been working with, um, with me in terms of taking good hard look on what is is popular and thriving and which programs are going to run continue to run and which ones that we may need to have to rethink um so we are still looking at that mr roller is going to be surveying students he's talking to teachers he's talking to coaches he's talking to advisors and we are going to take a look to see um what things we can swap out we're looking for teachers to run some elementary clubs, but that is going to take a little bit of time uh, because we're in the middle of that analysis right now. However, that is something that is extremely important to us. So um, I think that that's mm -hmm. about all that I wanted to say, but I do want to really thank the board members who have contributed to this discussion today because it was really, really helpful and helped to add clarity to a lot of things that um, maybe the members of public here or the members online uh, may not be um, uh, aware of. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, so yep, that's about wraps it up. We're going to go into executive session for matters of personnel. We will not be coming out. We will not be voting on anything. Um, so this meeting is adjourned. Our business meeting will be next uh, next week, next Monday. And um, we would just like to thank everyone for coming and congratulations once again to our budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you.